Welcome to Modi Makes. What's good, everybody? My name is Modi. This is Modi Makes, and today I'm going to show you a fantastic painting technique using nothing but common salt. The beautiful thing about salt is that it comes in these unique crystalline structures that you can use in a bunch of different ways to get interesting texture in your paintings. Especially if you get larger rocks like you can find in ice cream salt such as the ones that I have right here. I know, I know I heard one of those pieces of rock salt fall and now I can't find it. Oh, 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 oh. It was two. They lied to me. My ears, they lied to me. So let me show you how I used it to create a wonderful rock monster. Let's start where we always do, with some spray paint on a canvas. I'll start by hitting this canvas with a vibrant red to create a flat, saturated, pop art style portrait background. Now I'll need to create a brand new custom stencil for this canvas. So I'll grab a sheet of cardstock and cut it to the width of the paint. I'll need this stencil cutout to be as precise as possible and the only way to do that is to take it over to my studio and tape it to a board because I need this floppy floppy paper to be rigid like the proud tree. Then I'll project my line work onto that bad boy and perfectly outline the necessary shapes. With the stencil shapes transferred over, I'll whip out the bane of every designer's fingers, the X-Acto knife, and carefully cut out my stencil. Back at the spray shed, I'll grab four more colors and two boxes of Secret Spice. Slap my stencil down on the canvas and tape it up tight. Here's where the trick comes in. I'll start with my larger grain ice cream salt and sprinkle that on the stencil edge. Then I'll add some finer grain pickling salt for size variety. I'm going to use my four colors to create a shading gradient. So I'll start with my darkest color, black, and spray it along the right side of the stencil. Then I'll remove my grains of salt, exposing the red underneath. This will act as bounce light, shining off the shaded side of my rough rock monster skin. Now it's just a matter of repeating this process with all the colors from right to left. Using the salt to expose some of the color from each layer, creating a rough rock-like texture across the gradient. And once I remove the stencil to show the clean red background, I have a beautifully contrasting color palette of warm and cool tones for my Rocky Buddy to stand out on. There were a lot of steps to creating that background, or at least there were like two steps that I had to repeat over and over and over again. Regardless, it took a lot of time to complete, but I can't think of a better way to get some natural looking starting rocky texture to build upon to bring depth to my character. But there's a lot of building to do to bring this bad boy to life. So let's get back to the studio and get on with it, shall we? It's time for round two with my mini projector. The unexpected tough part was getting my sketch to line up with the projection again, because I very intelligently moved everything around after I finished last time. But I managed to stumble over this hurdle and get a good sketch out of it. So I'll grab my beloved Posca pens and get to making a monster. 
This rock monster is heavily inspired by the heavenly troopers from Castle in the Sky. And I love the look of the moss and flowers growing over their shoulders, combining the man-made with the natural. So I added a spot of that on my boy here too. These robots in the movies tend to the gardens that fill up a large portion of the facility. So I added a small flower being held by the rock monster as if it were inspecting its work with parental care. After defining all my different sections and segments to the character, I can fill in all the colored areas with beautiful, vibrant Posca paint. Making sure to choose colors that stand out from the background and give a defined edge to the composition, while maintaining a sensible unity to the character's color palette. To accomplish this, I work with mostly blues and greens throughout the body of the rock monster, just like the colors I chose for the background spray paint, only using some pops of yellows and reds to detail elements to draw your eye, such as the eyes of the creature and the flower in its hands. It seems like we have the majority of the painting process completed at this point, but in fact, the hardest and most important part is yet to come. Those of you who have seen my last video know I recently added a new technique in my arsenal. This technique brings layers of depth and life to my subjects. So buckle up and brace yourself for... <laughs> To continue adding more rough texture to the rock structure, I'm going to be building up multiple layers of stippling highlights and shadows to each element. This helps to define the three-dimensional form of this mostly flat painting, while also bringing a bright golden glow to the scene as if the portrait were captured in beautiful natural sunlight. Most of the elements are simply shaded with one highlight and one shadow color that work in tandem with the flat. But I'll I'll add extra layers of shadows to choice elements to help define the form and add extra depth. I've been obsessed with this technique recently, as I find it works perfectly with my chosen tools and style, and adds an interesting, almost vintage aesthetic to my portraits. After finishing my initial pass of colored stippling, I'll return with my black paint to add the darkest levels of shadows. This bumps up the contrast of the painting to make the character more striking, and further works to define the form and add atmospheric lighting, placing the character within the scene, even if that scene is just a red place. In this character's context, it also suggests that little dings, dents, and deformities that help to push the that rocky texture even further. Not to mention it's just satisfying to do and even better to look at. After a full eight hour workday of just stippling, I can clean up all my colors with some sharp black line work to keep my striking illustration style. But the beauty of adding the black stippling in to the darkest areas of shadows is that it hides the line work in the shadows, tricking your eyes into seeing more natural shading and contours while giving a harsh edge to the highlights, pushing the character into the foreground. And setting all the cracks and crevices into the darkness. And with a couple added detail elements for flair, the painting is complete and ready for those final shots. Thank you.
Whether you have it, my peoples, my painting Roboto Hei, at least I think that's how you pronounce it, that's the Japanese terminology for the characters in the movies, as I've read on Google at least, is complete. And I'm ecstatic with how that salt layered background element worked in well with the character and gave me a nice rough rocky texture to build upon. But let me know what you guys think of the piece down in the comments below. And let me know if you have any questions about this video or any other video I've made. I'd be happy to read through them all and respond to them personally as I always do. And you know, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like. That would be fantastic. And if you like me, you like the channel and you want to help support me the number one thing that you can do is to subscribe i really couldn't thank you enough if you did it means the world and with all that out of the way and without further ado i'll catch you guys in the next one peace thanks for watching